In part one, we looked at the services that directly relate to how the radio performs, but there are some other settings under services, so let's look at those now. Our look at the remaining settings under services begins with two related settings, that's AeroScout RFID and Echohow settings. This is to do with third-party location services. Devices have a location tag attached to them, and then a location engine will be able to pinpoint the location of the device on a map using the access points to triangulate the device. Designing for location services is a complex subject because you need to have more access points in situ in order to triangulate correctly. The Rucker Zone Director supports integration with AeroScout and Echohow location services, but it's not primarily a Ruckus product, therefore in order to find out more, you should check out the websites of the respective companies. Moving on, the next thing we see is active client detection. Now when this is enabled, the Zone Director will monitor the currently active clients and will trigger a warning event when the active clients go away from the access points and the signal strength received from the clients drops below a threshold. Let's just go for a moment to another system that I've got running here and have a look at the connected clients. We can see them under monitor wireless clients. All of the active clients are listed and we can see here this column giving us a signal percentage. Now we can actually click on this, it's saying percentage at the moment, but if we click on it then we'll see the signal in decibels. So the better the signal, the better quality signal, the higher the percentage. So that's a decibel value represented as a percentage. So 99% is obviously clearly a good signal. But if the client moves away from the access point and that signal drops, then we will see that moving down. Once it reaches 5%, that's when the alarm is triggered because that client is now on the edge of the cell and that has implications for data rates, airtime fairness and general network performance. So maybe when that happens, it's useful for you to know. Next, we have the tunnel configuration. And this only applies to WLANs that have tunnel mode enabled. And we'll look at that with the advanced WLAN settings later on. With the first option ticked, enable tunnel encryption for tunnel traffic, it gives you the option to enable tunneling on a per WLAN basis. So it needs to be enabled in both places. When tunneling is enabled, there's a couple of things that you might want to look at just to make sure the tunnel runs optimally. And one of those things is to block multicast traffic from entering the tunnel. Furthermore, you can block broadcast traffic from the network, apart from obviously ARP and DHCP requests, which do need to be passed. And finally, you can enable proxy ARP of the tunnel. And what that means is that the access points will proxy the ARP requests on behalf of the clients to cut network traffic down. The final option is the packet inspection filter. This is really an advanced setting, so you wouldn't normally use this unless you have specific reasons for it. But here's a quick look at how it works. It only applies to ARP broadcast filters for mesh links, proxy ARP for WLAN interfaces, and proxy ARP for tunneled WLANs. When this is enabled, the access point will try and reduce the neighbor discovery traffic by replacing broadcast messages with unicast messages for known hosts. When packets are received for unknown hosts, the packet inspection filter supplements this functionality by limiting the rate at which the packets are delivered. And this is the configurable option from 0 to 3,000 packets per second. As I say, that's quite an advanced setting. So again, you'd only really enable this if you've been analyzing your network and you know reasons why this is a good thing to do. And that brings us to the end of part two of the services settings.